I'm John Bowden. This is the start of a few shorts we're doing on the Paul Carrick series. We're revisiting it because we want to promote the fact that we've just released the entire interview that we did with Paul Carrick on our sister station, Rock History Book. There'll be links right at the top of the description of this video. For the next five clips coming up every three, four days, we're going to feature what's on that interview when we hope you enjoy it. Here's part two of some of the best clips from the Paul Carrick interview. Two first Mike and the Mechanic albums. I kept going because... You're a writer. You know how to write a good song. So were you just brought in with Mike Rutherford just basically said, oh, I need a vocalist. How did that? Did you know him before? No, I was drafted in as a singer. Again, there's a long story there. During the sort of mid 80s or early 80s, I, I had a band together with Nick Lowe. Yes. Do you know Nick Lowe at all? Yeah, yeah. Um, after leaving Squeeze, that was one of the reasons I kind of left Squeeze was to work with Nick. We were hopelessly, we were just not what was happening in the, in music at that time. So we, we were low tech playing this strange rock and roll music, kind of skiffle rock and roll. And um, meanwhile, this things were changing, you know, the synthesizers and all, all that sort of stuff, which Nick wouldn't have anything to do with. He wouldn't have a synthesizer anywhere near the studio. But um, anyway, we had a lot of fun as as that band, but we, we couldn't get arrested really to commercially or on the radio or anything like that. So um, that kind of fizzled out. We did a lot of tours opening up for people like Tom Petty, the cars uh, on these arena tours, you know, we'd go on at eight o'clock, the crowd would be disinterested. And by eight 45, we'd be in the bar, you know, so it was yeah. like, that. anyway, so that was just running its course and, we were, we were about to let it go. And I got a call from a guy called B.A. B. A. Robertson. Uh, and he asked me to sing a demo for him. I didn't know him, never met him. He said, I've written this song. I want to pitch it for a song, uh, for a movie. And we want that guy who sang How Long. So that's why I'm calling this. Oh, okay, I'll come down and sing it for you. You know, which I did. I didn't get paid for any of this, by the way. But um, and, and he said, oh, oh, by the way, I'm writing songs with Mike Rutherford, you know, from Genesis. And... Uh, he's not going to sing on this album. Would you be interested in coming down? So I said, yeah, sure. And I, that, that was my introduction to uh, Mike and the Mechanics. They, they'd recorded a whole lot of kind of tracks, you know, backing tracks, and they just needed some vocals on. And on that first album, there were several people doing the vocals, specifically uh, the guy, because eventually we became a touring outfit and we had the two lead singers, myself and a guy called Paul Young from Manchester, not not Paul Young from London. They kind of used to play us off against each other a little bit. It, I mean, not intentionally, I don't think. But, you know, we, we were both insecure singers. We had this nice gig in this new band that was happening. and um, But we we often kind of auditioned the same song and then Mike would choose who got to sing it. You know, it's a bit like that. We were very different characters. Yeah. Paul was fantastic. He came alive when he was on stage. He loved being the front man. He was, he had charisma and he had, a, apart from a great voice, and he's a fun, gregarious kind of guy. I was more the sort of quiet, I don't know, soulful or whatever wow. guy. So we were very different characters, but we were both working class Northern guys who knew how to be in a band. What was the decision process of not being in Mike and the Mechanics? Was that your idea? Yeah. To be honest, when Paul passed away, I think really, I think that would have been the time for us to have said, okay, you know, that's the end of that chapter. Because we, we had a thing, it was, it was a popular band, you know, and um, touring, especially around UK and, and, and Europe. And, and it became a thing that, that it was the three of us. It was Mike, Paul and myself. When, when he went, you know, it lost, it lost the chemistry, to be honest. And... Um, Probably should have left it there, to be honest with you. But um, we tried to keep, Mike wanted to keep keep it going. He felt that, you know, we had established something and we should try to keep it going. So we did. And um, then there was always a question of um, time because it would take time to write stuff, record it, promote, tour, whatever have you. And it was taking up a, a, quite a lot of time. I felt that I wasn't giving myself enough time to do my thing, which, as I say, I, I love being a part of all, other people's projects. And 
um, but my game of character wasn't really my thing in that sense. I mean, I think I brought something to it, but you know, not necessarily. Um, I'm more of a rootsy fan, you know, um, soul, country, that sort of stuff. And I wanted to give myself the opportunity to, to <coughs> do that. And, and to be honest, not least, because I actually realized that, you know, I'd been doing this for a long time. I've sung hits for bands that made, and I, you know, and I think, to be honest, that the thing what did it was I put out a little compilation album of my own little label. And, it, you know, it's called uh, The Story So Far. And I had to license records that I'd sung on, you know, to, to have on this thing. And I wasn't allowed to have the living years. <laughs> and, I, and suddenly the penny dropped. It was like, you know, I have no rights to these songs, you know, and when it, which is okay. Oh, no, okay. I'll pay the license fee. But when it, when I was denied the opportunity to, when other third parties had used this song, you know, so and I, I can't really have a compilation without that. And, and that kind of made me think, you know what, even at this stage, which is 20 years ago, I need to have my own catalog of work that I own and control. So uh, that's, kind of why I did it and um, I left and um, so there's a new kind of lineup now and I'm, I'm sure they're very good I mean I know Andy Roachford is a great great singer so um, that's fine we're okay I've seen Mike recently and we're fine have you uh, have you heard their newer stuff not really 